and that sheep remained in the confession box for the entire Easter Monday Mass. Wait, I'm just getting word of breaking news coming from Dublin's O'Connell Street where a group of men have seized the general post office. Our reporter Dara is at the scene. Dara? Joe, I'm standing here outside the GPO, which is 100% real and definitely not a green screen, where a group of men allegedly led by one Patrick Henry Pierce have read out a document proclaiming Ireland as a sovereign nation. We're independent now. Anish Marielle Gwil Aaron in a Seer Start, Thomas Abelte on Nult Ayenov in Archanga Dukasuk. Is that Irish, Joe? Can you not understand it? No, unfortunately all culture has been mercilessly beaten out of me by the black and tans. That's ludicrous. Almost as ludicrous as a television broadcast in the year 1916. So, can you describe the appearance of this Porrick Pierce character? Uh, yeah, uh, he looks like this. He always looks to the left? Uh, apparently, every documented image of this guy is a side profile. Ah, yeah, yeah, I see it now. Must be his more photogenic side. Anything else there? Well, these rebels have just seized several major buildings within Dublin City, including the Royal Army Barracks, the Four Courts and Boland's Bakery Mill. I understand the others, but why do the rebels need a bakery? I suppose the preparation for uprising against the British Empire would leave anyone with a hankering for baked goods. Sorry, Derek. We're going to have to stop you there and switch over to our reporter, Aoife O'Connor, uh, with more developments on Moore Street. Aoife? The uprising is certainly making its presence felt. We have to heed the safety messages. Remain in the safety of your homes. Guns are blazing here and Moore Street is in chaos. Don't make unnecessary journeys. Don't take risks on treacherous roads. Incredibly, the fearless street traders here are still selling apples and oranges, four for a euro. I'm baffled that TV news are not concerned for this reporter's safety. We are doing everything we can to ensure your safety, Aoife. Don't worry. Trains have stopped running, posts cannot be delivered, and the offices of the Irish Independent, the country's largest newspaper, are destroyed, leaving the Irish Times as our only other source of news. Ugh, oh, not a unionist paper. Did you know that the first shots fired in the Rising took place in County Leash the night before the rebels took their positions? The biggest piece of news to me here is that Leash is still classified as a county. Also, did you know that the rebels were technically responsible for the world's first ever non-direct radio broadcast? Until 1916, signals were directed to a specific receiving station, so just to throw a signal aimlessly into the atmosphere was a radical concept. I'm gonna have to stop you there. We have Dara now with more. Joe, I'm outside St. Stephen's Green, which has been seized by a woman by the name of Constance Markovine. Dara? Christ, that's a lot of syllables. Um, anyway, I'm with an actual rebel of the Rising here with me now. This is Danny Quinn. Danny, how are you? Good, yeah. There's a bit of a foggy dew in the air. But the wind is mild and conditions are good for an uprising. Absolutely. Do you know, do the public know what's going on right now? Ah, sure they think the Germans are invading us. A German invasion? When do bad things ever happen in Germany? <laughs> <laughs> sure, didn't we ask the Germans for arms and all? And where are those arms now, Danny? Oh, the English sunk the ship carrying them. England, sinking all of the fun. Anyway, that's all from us. Back to you in the studio, Joe. <laughs> oh, those rebels. Well, that's all from us. I'm sure this whole rebellion malarkey will blow over by morning. Till then, take care.